Working with variables involves a three-step process. Create, adjust, use. Let's look at an example outside of Storyline to understand the process. Let's say you are in charge of birthday parties at your office. So you decide to make an Excel spreadsheet to keep track of everyone's birthday. Then you decide that you should probably keep track of people's cake preferences. Do they prefer chocolate or vanilla? Do they have a nut allergy? Do they need it to be gluten-free? So what's the first thing you'd do? You'd probably create a new column and label it something that made sense, such as cake preference. You create a place to store it. Next, you'd go around, find out what everyone's preferences are, and enter them here. You'd adjust the value for each person in the cake preference column. Finally, it would come time for someone's birthday, and you'd use that information. Why store it if you don't have a plan to use it? So when you order the cake, you'd get the information to make your order. To recap, you would have created a place to save it, adjusted the values for each person, and then used that information when the time came. Storyline variables work with the same three steps. Create a place to save the information, adjust the value for each learner and situation, and then use it for some purpose. Let's look at different ways to do each. Some objects in Storyline automatically create a variable. For example, when you add a text entry box, Storyline creates a text variable to keep track of that answer. When you add a slider, Storyline creates a number variable to keep track of the current position of the slider. And when you add closed captioning, Storyline creates a true-false variable to keep track of whether the captions are showing or not. Other variables you create yourself manually, such as a variable to keep track of which avatar a learner picked, or a variable to keep track of points in a game. As with creating, some variables are adjusted automatically. When a learner types in a text entry box, the answer is automatically stored in the variable. When a student moves a slider, the underlying number variable is automatically updated. When a student clicks the player's closed captioning button, the true-false variable switches value. In addition, you can add your own triggers to adjust the value of a variable. For example, the student clicks the avatar they want, which adjusts the variable to reflect their choice. The student answers a question, and the score is adjusted based on how many points they've earned. The whole point of storing information in variables is that you want to use that information in some way. Here are some of the ways you might use a variable. You can display the value back to the student, such as showing them their name, showing them an answer to an earlier question, or showing a point total. You can use it for if-then logic. Go to this slide if they live in California, but go to that slide if they don't. Or maybe show a badge if they answer correctly, but don't show the badge if they don't. One big advantage of variables is that they don't belong to a single slide. They belong to the whole course. So the value can be adjusted on one slide and then used on a different slide, such as capturing an answer in one scene and then customizing content in another scene.